So hello my loves, welcome to Emily Style Salon After Dark. So um I am rearranging some stuff, making space for the ever-changing and growing business. I got a facial today, so my skin looks extra sensitive right now, and these lights are not helping. I don't know what she did over here, but anyway. Um, so yeah, this is what we're working on. We're trying to get more services and i wish that i could reverse this camera but it won't let me reverse it once it's uh facing one way i don't know whatever maybe i can nope not letting me so anyway this is our um original service room i just brought this in which we're gonna spray paint we're gonna lighten it up and brighten it up we're gonna update that little light up there so that we can do not only lashes in here but facials and stuff um this cabinet's going to be moved hopefully to the other room then we've got our space for a washer dryer because every salon when you work as hard as you we do you need your washer dryer space which is here and oh my gosh what a mess right now behind me this is just terrible but these are the things that were in the cabinet. So rearranging because we've added a second room to our space. Here it is now. Um, and then someone's gonna come in and help me remove these shelves. Not that I can't do it, but he offered and he's my best friend. So whatever, let him help me. So this room is kind of small. It's not really big, but we're going to use it as a wax space and also possibly facials as a backup or lashes, whatever, because we need two service rooms. And then what we had to do was our break room, which was always small to begin with, but this was our break room. We um, had a cabinet here and we put buffet style or whatever or the employees we would all sit here or what have you and we would just eat but because we needed that room we've turned this into a multi-purpose room so on this half we're gonna have all our color and everything a lot more organized we just you know we've been throwing the stuff in here so far and then here once those shelves are going to be put on this side so then this will be our multi-purpose this will be where we put all our food and snacks and bins and stuff and then i'm hoping to put like maybe a bistro or like a little bar here with two chairs so that the girls the ladies and gentlemen whoever's here with us working my team we can have a little spot i think i'm gonna move this maybe switch it that way so that they can sit here and then i might have to remove this but you know we're working we're working on making it more comfortable here so we can add more services and we have a sink here we have another sink station here and i think my bathroom is just way too big um which i was also considering putting the washer dryer here moving the sink this way facing this way and then putting the washer dryer stackable here because this is this bathroom is huge it's it's a very large space and it's accommodating for a wheelchair and all that other stuff so it's it's large enough still that we can have access for you know handicap accessible um but it's very hard we have I'm thinking this back wall, I may put another built in, which is what my dad had built me for my first salon. He built, I had a cove, kind of like the size of this cove here. I had this in Kenilworth where I first started. And so he built me this huge monstrosity to put in the back corner because it was kind of like the salon had separate rooms and then the back room i don't know if any of you remember because some of you were clients that went to kenilworth the back room had this corner that was perfect for this thing but it's huge so now for any of you i'm five eight and the thing is like about maybe seven feet 
so it's huge and it's deep so there's like you know you can put a lot of bottles it was very useful for when we put the gallons for shampoo and things like that it was perfect for that kind of stuff so um what i'm gonna do is paint it to brighten it up so that the room doesn't look so dark and it makes it look bigger in here but i'm just encouraging you small business owners salon owners that you know some of these little changes you can do on your own you don't need to necessarily pay someone all the time to have things done in your business um or you can do things with your team budget friendly so what we also did was we decided this is gonna eventually be i haven't figured it out i was thinking of either doing makeup in this corner here but i also have that back corner which was also area for makeup so i might just get the led lights or that mirror because everybody said well you already have the mirror so what's the point of doing um something else if you already have a mirror for that so which is true so what i may do is just in this corner repurpose it I love my bling bling. It's so pretty. Well, my my reception area was here, but because it's not feng shui, I moved it to here. And as soon as I moved it here, believe it or not, any of you that believe in feng shui, um, it started to work very well. So you have to make sure that your space is set up for success. Um, so thankfully, you know, business is continuing to grow. Our team is continuously growing. Um, we're hiring too. So if you are a hairstylist with customers and you've got a talent for coloring and cuts and blowouts, if you're a barber, if you do amazing stuff, we're hiring, we're looking for you. Um, our team, we just want the best in our spot. And if you don't know a lot, we will train you. You know, I have a very supportive team um, there's about eight of us, some freelance, and some here more, um, more frequently. Um, and so that's what we want. We want a successful team that's here seven days out of the week. Um, you know, flexible schedule. We want to have people come in different days of the week, different times. Um, you want to do nine to three, you do nine to three. You want to do... 11 to 6 11 to 6 and then if not you can do 5 to 9 which is what i normally work during the week and then the weekend so if you are looking for a job come through baby come through and come work part-time come work full-time i mean most of us don't ever have to really work full-time in our industry because you can make full-time money part-time schedule um, but if you hustle and you want to do real big things and you want to work more than 30 hours a week, that's your prerogative. But um, for the most part, most of us do 25 to 35 hours a week, give or take. And um, it's enough to, you know, to do very well. So, sorry guys, I'm like just doing what I'm doing here. But this industry is very very good industry to be in and I gotta paint those ceiling tiles too there's a lot to do but it's so amazing it's such a blessing to have your own business and to be self-employed or work for yourself um, so don't ever get discouraged if you want to make it happen you have to manifest it. You have to speak it into existence. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, this very location, I wanted this location for years. And I remember when I first got my Kenilworth location. Um, I think I've said this in other videos before. I heard a still voice that said, you have not because you ask not. So ask and you shall receive. So you have not because you ask not. So you have to ask in faith and believe that it can be done, that it can be possible. Um, sorry, I was just getting over bronchitis and so I'm a little still wheezy. 
I get a little bit out of breath and because I've been doing laps around here. <laughs> little laps, but laps nonetheless. But, you know, the passion and the desire to want to do something, the drive, the motivation, that enough will get you started but then you have to reinvent yourself and you have to be consistent with what you do you can't just open up and then let it fall apart you have to keep in reinventing and finding out what's the newest trends what else can we offer um hire new people young people and older people you have to have a nice group of people working with you as your team eclectic really because you know, you have the people that want more the old school style and the young style. So you want to be able to mix both of those in your business. Um, a lot of people are not doing the brick and mortar, but I wanted this space. So when I first got my first location, I had moved to this area, to Rahway, New Jersey. And I was in Kenilworth because it was more affordable for rent there. Um, I did find a place in Rahway, but my parents at the time, I let them, you know, tell me stuff and they were very discouraging. They were like, no, that's too expensive. It was a thousand dollars rent on this same road. I'm paying almost double for where I'm at now. And they were like, oh, it's too expensive. So they're very sarcastic when my father says to me, oh, if you can find a place for $600 or $700 rent, he's like, I'll help you. I'll help you put your stations up and I'll help you do what you got to do in the space. And so when I heard that voice, you have not because you asked not, I asked. I said, ah, okay, I want a salon and I want it in this place. I want to pay this much in rent. And... It worked out. It was very, very, um, I don't know. It just worked out. It worked out and like things fell into place like that. And the same thing happened here. I think I've shared my story of this specific location. I had driven by and this place was called Moda, um, which I guess is Italian for style, but also Spanish for style, Moda or being in style type of thing. Um, and I'm Emily Styles, which is similar to Mola, the word Styles. Um, and I've been here for now, this will be my official third year. So I'm officially okay, so I'm officially here two years. Um, I started in 2020. And then I was here 2021. And now we're starting out in our first, you know, the beginning of 2022. And we're expanding. The pandemic did hit us. We got hit hard. Um, we didn't receive any aid because um, being that we had just started in this new location in 2020, it was brand new and it was only three months in to the new year where the pandemic hit and so many people took advantage of business loans and grants and this and all these resources and I got nothing. I mean zero. So whatever everybody was getting when people were getting the $1,200, that's what I got. And I used that to keep this place going. And thankfully, I have a nine to five. And the nine to five is what helped the dream to further, um, to further my dream. So sometimes you have to take a step back and you have to do things you don't want to do in order to make the dream possible. So... I work my nine to five. I'm thankful for my nine to five. Um, met some amazing people there. And I was able to get the keys to this place. And because of my nine to five, I was able to successfully keep money coming in. You know, I worked very hard. You know, I worked um, at some point I was working 75 hours a week, sometimes 80 between both jobs. But you know, when you want something, you have to you have to have that hustle. You have to have that drive. And people are like, "How do you do it? How are you seven days a week? How are you busting your butt? And you don't don't you have time off?" There are people that were trying to take me out on a date. I'm like, I don't have time for that. I've got to be at the business. You know, I have employees. I have rent to pay. I have stuff to do. Oh well, don't you ever take off? Like, dude, I told you already. My business is my priority. And we can be friends, we can go out to the movies and go out to dinner if I'm available. And if not, then I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to stop 
trying to obtain my goals for anybody because I did that already. I was in the marriage and I put my life on hold and my dreams and my goals on hold for everyone. And so this time around, got a new wind, a new attitude, um, house hunting for the last year and a half to no avail, no success. But, you know, the market's been crazy. It's been saturated with a lot of New Yorkers. No offense, New Yorkers, but it's been saturated in Jersey and they've been paying 50 to 100,000 above ask. So I'm not going to pay that kind of money for these homes that I know are not worth that kind of money. But, you know, in 2022, now this year, some of those homes may tank. You know, the interest rates have gone up or are going up soon. So anybody who was able to lock in a really low interest rate, which I would have gotten last year when I was going to close on a property, I didn't get. But you know what? Everything happens when it's supposed to happen. And I wasn't meant to buy a house last year. And hopefully this year, if it's meant for me to buy, I'll buy. If not, I'll build. You know, once the business gets to where I need it to be, I will build my dream home with my partner because by then hopefully I will have my partner in crime and we will build an amazing life for ourselves I mean that's what I've always wanted I've wanted someone to build with me and then maybe have a child um but being that I gave up so much um and I held back everybody would say stuff to me so i'm here to tell you guys don't let the naysayers don't let those debbie downers don't let the people that don't do anything discourage you if you have a dream if you have a goal and you want to do something you make sure you do it because i am in the second location following my dream following what i want to do i am loving every moment of it are there times where I get a little concerned? Of course, that's normal. But this is my 12th year officially as the Emily Styles brand. And 2010, so actually, no, in 2009, I knew that I was creating the brand. So I had already had my website because I had already envisioned it. I had already manifested it. So work on your vision boards, work on goals and your dreams and your visions and, and work on making it a reality. Say, I am, I can, I will. Don't say you can't or you won't or you're not able to. Don't talk about money because, you know, if you're in the lack mentality, that same lack mentality is going to keep you blocked and keep you stagnant. And when you say I can or I will or I have, that's when your abundance will come in. And even if you have to fake it until you make it. I remember one of our cosmetology instructors, one of our teachers, Miss Moore. So cool. Shout out to Miss Moore if you ever get to see this. But Miss Moore from Capri. Shame on what they did, though, to the students, how they shut down all their schools and they did what they did to these kids recently. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Miss Moore was dope. And um, she used to tell us, this here is our stage. And we perform here every day. And she says, you fake it till you make it. And I remember another good thing that she told us was you never talk about people that you know ever in the salon you never talk about customers you never and that was the best thing to live by because she says you know you don't ever want to make a customer feel bad or feel like wow if you're talking about her you're talking about me too as soon as i walk out the door which they used to do with some of the salons i worked at so we don't do that here but we talk celebrity gossip because she says these are people that you don't really know and you'll never really meet um unless i become a celebrity stylist which could happen but it was so cool. She was just like, you know, you talk about J-Lo and how, you know, her and Ben Affleck. You know, you talk about celebrities. Like, nobody's going to... And it's never negative. I never used to say negative stuff. But it would always just... That's just entertainment. You know, it's neutral entertainment that, you know, you don't look... You know, people aren't frowning upon it. Um, but anyway, that's that's here. Me just giving you little ideas and things of what she shared with us that you never do. You don't talk about people, which, you know, honestly, guys, you don't want to be going into a business, any business. I don't care what business it is. And you hear the girls or the employees talking about so-and-so that just left. That's rude. Um, I'm not going to spend my money, hard-earned money on you, and then I'm going to tip you very well. And if you're talking crap about somebody that just left, you're going to talk crap about me as soon as I walk out of there. So you know what? It's something you should never do. You should keep your business professional. If 
no customers are in your business and you feel like talking about do you remember so and so that's on you that's your business which i don't think you should be doing anyway um because you speak about other people you're putting out negative negative karma out there you're putting out negative juju don't talk negative about people um you could just say you know i don't know if i like this person's attitude or whatever you could say if you're upset and you just want to vent okay but like don't make it a career to talk about people because gossip isn't going to get you anywhere mind your business and don't worry about other people live your life um so yeah the emily style salon brand has been in since 20 2009 officially actually so it's been a while and we're merging or i shouldn't say merging but we're evolving and hopefully we will have our new name either the end of this year or next year we'll see when that happens but we'll have our new name that is going to encompass the brand period um so we can expand and do other things but I'm not going to talk about all my dreams and goals with everybody like that because you know they never happen so you got to think about it on your own and 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 it's good too to not tell everybody what you're doing like i just shared some stuff with you guys but you know, that's my problem. I shared with some people that I was house hunting and I was doing this and doing that. And then it hasn't happened. I haven't gotten a house. I asked, a matter of fact, I told my ex-husband, oh, you know, I'm going to be closing on this property. And I was this close to closing on that property and it didn't work out. So until I get the keys in my hand, I'm just house hunting. I'm looking around. I'm just looking. I'm window shopping. And if it's not meant for me this year, then it's not meant for me this year. Um, and if it's not meant for me to own, it's not meant for me to own and I'll be a renter. It is what it is. But, you know, try to be in stealth mode when you do stuff, you know, write your little vision boards, write everything you want to do at the new moon and the full moon that people say there's different people who do different things that during the new moon or the full moon, you can write down what you want to do and you can say it before, you know, before you go to bed or whatever. Like I, my goal is da da da, and I would like to see this happen or you could just write it down. Another thing is if you have dreams of things, you should write down your dreams. A lot of dreams that I've had have been very interesting. Um, one of them recently was that I was selling multi-million dollar properties. I was selling a $15 million property and then a 1.5 million or two, but like specific numbers. So I was selling them. And if any of you knew or know, um, my goal has always been to do real estate as well, to buy, sell, fix, flip, whatever, but I'm not there yet. That's not the phase that I'm in right now. And again, you don't tell everybody everything you're doing. So I would like to be in real estate, but I'm not in real estate. But um, if you're an entrepreneur or you have an entrepreneur heart and spirit, be consistent. Um, don't take no for an answer. If a bank says no, keep trying. Another bank will say yes. Um, there's programs for different people. Even if you get $5,000, even if you get $10,000 from the SBA, whatever you can get, you budget and you stretch it. And if you have to stay doing Uber, if you have to do Uber Eats or Grubhub or whatever else, if you have to clean floors, if you have to clean houses, cars, whatever you have to do, there's ways to make money in our country that you can make money in no time. You can be a nanny, you can walk dogs, you can do whatever. And those are jobs that you could do on set schedules. So if you're trying to start a business, you start part time. When you see the money rolling in and you see that everything is working to your advantage and then you see that you're making the money that you would need to survive and do whatever then you take advantage and you do that if you have an opportunity and you're living with family right now save your money save and save and save don't be going clubbing and twerking and getting your brazilian butt lifts and your you know your breasts done and all this plastic surgery unless you're a stripper and that's how you're gonna make your money that's one thing <laughs> but if you're not a stripper and that's not how you're going to make your money, and what the hell, why are you going to drop 10, 15, 20 grand on getting your whole body done? Um, save that money and get yourself a business. And once you start rolling in the mo money and you see, wow, this is really lucrative and I'm doing blah, blah, blah. Then you go and you do whatever it is else you want to do. I'm not judging you. You do what you want to do. But if you're trying to be successful and you're trying to do stuff, don't go out there spending money you don't have. 
If you get a business loan, use it strictly for the business. Don't go out there buying yourself a new lease or getting a new car or whatever. Like, people do stupid shit. And they get a few dollars and they don't know how to act. Um, you know, I could have a Mercedes. I could have a Range Rover. I don't do it because I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know? I'm not there yet. Hey, when I'm rolling in it and I decide I want whatever and I go to the lot and say, hey, you know what? I'm making $50,000 a month, $100,000 a month. I can get whatever the heck I want because the maintenance on these cars for what? To say that I have it? I'm not knocking you if you got it, if you got it like that. But if you're living at home and you got a Range Rover or you're living at home with a G-Wagon or a S500 or whatever and you don't got a place of your own or you're renting a small little room or studio and, and you're driving this fancy-ass car, I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You're not going to live in that car. And you're just doing that for appearances. You're better off building your little empire once you get to that then you go ahead and you want to splurge you splurge because i'm not saying that you can't but you gotta be realistic guys and this video went a little longer than i expected but you know i love you guys i want to see you all succeed um and remember not to let anybody take you away from your dream and your goal and to make sure that you write everything out that you're trying to do get a business plan if you don't know how to do a business plan have somebody help you there's some of these um sba community centers or whatever that they can have a mentor help you i paid for four hours with an amazing woman bertha robinson through the sba in new jersey she's amazing again her name is bertha robinson she helped me as a mentor and she was amazing and i only paid sixty dollars for four hours you know what she charges people to do consultations because she does this on the side four hundred dollars an hour to help businesses and help them grow and we negotiated with for a different price but she says she thinks that it might be a conflict of interest because i was with her under the sba and i don't think she can continue a relationship outside of the sba whatever whatever because she signed some kind of contract um but if that contract is up in a year and i can then work with her then i will work with her because she's amazing she helped me really um sit down like what are my goals what am i trying and not only that she was awesome because she was like hey the last time we spoke you said you were gonna do this 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 that and she she went down the list and she's like look at that you did this and you did that and i you don't realize how much you accomplish and I work a full-time job. So imagine if I was giving my business the time and attention that it truly needs and deserves, which I'm hopeful that this will be the year that I can do that. Because um, you can't run yourself to the ground. But, you know, I need my business to make my money and make money for me. Um, but we're doing well, guys. We're doing well. And you can, too. Um... We're talking millionaire group soon. And um, a lot of people are like, oh, why are you always... Mil millionaire is not a big deal. Being a millionaire, you can have that happen in no time. So, you know, you can invest in properties and have a million dollars worth of real estate. You can have... You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a big deal. Like, back in the day, millionaire, like, oh, my goodness, whoa. Nowadays, people make a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. Couples make two fifty a year together. Sometimes more than that. So it's not a big deal. Um, you just have to strive for that success. Anyway, guys, you can do it. You can make it happen. So um, I pray that you guys follow through with your dreams and go to the SBA, get yourself a mentor and all that for cheap. Like I said, $20 an hour for four hours. You paid for three and you got a fourth for free. It's on some BOGO sale and shit. So <laughs> it's a really good deal. So if you're trying to get a mentor, get you one. There's students too that can help you with just your, your um, business plan, writing and everything. So just do what you got to do. There's a lot of resources out there. Just look for it and ask for help. And if you need me for anything, please leave a comment below. And maybe I can point you in the right direction. 
um because i'm pretty decent at networking with other people and connecting some dots i can help you as best as i can you know depending on what food you know if you're in the food industry i can help you if you're into uh carcuterie i can't stand saying that word carcucci boards we call them even though i know it's not that charcuterie i think it is um sorry if i killed it my best friend is in business doing that and i love you andrea shout out to the grazing bird amazing her her stuff is delicious and beautiful again the grazing bird amazing that's my bff um so shout out to her and again support small businesses everybody you know we're in a, a new wave so let's help each other out support each other and keep growing um you guys are the bomb love y'all take care